in today's video, we'll be specifically looking into the demand curve. Uh, we will shed some light on uh, what is the demand curve, the law of demand, how to derive the market demand curve. We'll be also looking into the determinants of demand. And lastly, we would see what is the difference between change in quantity uh, demanded versus change in demand. Yeah. So let's move on. Now, what is demand? Yeah, demand refers to the willingness and ability. Yeah? So this is the two concepts that you have to understand yeah, before uh, we go into in detail on demand. Willingness, it means as an individual, you are prepared. You want to buy a particular product. Yeah, Ability here, it means that you have the financial means, you have the money yeah, to buy the products. So technically, demand is the okay willingness and ability yeah, of a buyer to purchase a particular product for in a period of time yeah? so you have the willingness and you have the ability yeah so next we will look into the uh, demand curve yeah so let me show you uh, what is the demand curve on the y-axis we have the price so let's uh, put a dollar sign over here yeah and on the x-axis we have quantity yeah it's in amount so let's plot the demand curve we can plot the demand curve based on this table here where you can see when price is 1, quantity demanded is 30. When price is 2, quantity demanded is 20. And when price is 3, quantity demanded is 10. So now, let's plot. Price 1, quantity is 30. So this is point A. And when the price is 2, quantity demanded is 20. We have B. And when price is 3, quantity demanded here is 10. This is your point C. Now, if we join all these points, yeah, we connect them all together, this is going to be the demand curve. Yeah. So, this is how yeah, you plot your demand curve. And can you see the demand curve is downward sloping? Yeah, it has a negative relationship between price and quantity so what does law of demand says okay other things equal okay if price rises quantity demanded falls if price falls quantity demanded arises so there are two important concepts to understand why there is a negative relationship first is income effect and the second one is substitution effect so based on the law of demand when the price increases quantity demanded is going to decrease and if the price decreases quantity demanded is going to increase now why there is a negative relationship we can explain based on two concepts that we have discussed earlier one is income effect and the second one is substitution effect so let's look into income effect first now let's assume this is your monthly consumption of pasta and we assume your monthly income is $100 and you spend this $100 to only buy pasta. So initially when the price of pasta was $10, you bought 10 packs of pasta per month. Yeah. Now let's say if the price of pasta per pack increases from 10 to 20. Now your existing income is not changing when the price of the goods is changing. So with the 100 ringgit now, you can't buy 10 packs of pasta, but you will have to now reduce your consumption. So with that 100 ringgit, you will only be able to buy 5 packs of pasta. So can you see now, your demand have actually decreased Okay, when the price increases. From 10 to 20, your quantity demanded for pasta reduces from 10 to 5. So can you see there is actually a negative relationship between price and quantity. When the price increases, quantity decreases. So the second reason yeah, for the inverse relationship or the negative relationship is the substitution effect. Now, a substitute for pasta would be bread. Yeah. So what happens is that, yeah, as a rational consumer, when the price of pasta increases, you will search for an alternative which is cheaper. Okay, which is probably in our case here is bread. 
So therefore we can see, yeah, when the price was 10, you were consuming a greater portion of pasta. You buy more pasta packs a month. But when the price increases from 10 to 20, you will reduce your consumption of pasta. At the same time, now what you will do is that you will allocate the money to buy more bread. Okay, because bread would be much more cheaper in this case here as compared to pasta. So that is substitution effect. Based on the previous example, we have just discussed an individual demand curve. Now next, we will look into how do we derive a market demand curve. So how do we get the uh, market demand curve for pasta? Yeah, so first we have to understand over here. Assuming that in this world, okay, we only have two people who consume pasta. We have John and we have Andy. Yeah, I'm just giving a very drastic example here. So this is the individual demand curve for John. Okay, demand for John. This is the individual demand curve for Andy. So demand for Andy. So at two dollars, John consumes five packets of pasta a month. At price two dollars, Andy consumes seven packets of pasta. Okay. So how do I get the market demand curve? The market demand curve is the summation of individual demand curve. So at price two, the quantity demanded will be five plus seven. Okay, so it will be twelve. So how did I get this? It's the the market will be a summation of demand John plus demand of Andy. Okay, so. Technically, how do we get the market demand curve? The market demand curve is an aggregate of all the individual demand curve. It's a summation okay, of all the individual demand curves. Yeah. So, uh, in reality, we might not only have two individuals, we'll have more than two individuals. Yeah. So, by taking the summation, we can get the market demand curve for pasta. Okay, next we will look into the determinants of demand. Yeah, there are several determinants of demand. We have price of the product, we have price of related products, taste and preference, income, consumer expectations, and number of buyers. Yeah, so let's have a look at them one by one. So let's look into the first determinant, which is the price of the product itself. Yeah, so we can see uh, this is the uh, demand for pasta. So let's say when the price of pasta was P0, the amount of quantity demanded is Q0. Yeah, put a point A here. And if the price yeah, was P1, the quantity demanded was Q1. So, this is what we mean by the price of the product itself. And this is exactly explaining the law of demand. Where we can see... If there's going to be changes in price, if the price increases from P0 to P1, then the quantity is going to decrease from Q0 to Q1. And if the price decreases, let's say from P1 to P0, then the quantity is going to increase from Q1 to Q0. Yeah. So the price of the product will influence the amount of quantity here. Yeah. So that is the first determinant, or technically we can say it's a factor that will influence yeah, the amount of pasta yeah, that is being bought or the quantity demanded of pasta the next factor is price of related product so we have pasta and bread so we look into the uh, substitute first so let's say okay in this case here uh, the uh, substitute for pasta is bread and the price of bread goes down okay the price of bread goes down so technically bread becomes cheaper as compared to pasta relatively yeah so therefore, what consumers are going to do, consumers are going to shift their purchase from pasta to bread. So probably they'll be consuming more bread as compared to pasta. Yeah. So what will happen to the demand curve for pasta? As people would prefer to buy bread as well as the price is cheaper, the demand for pasta will decrease from D0 to D1. So it will shift to the left. Can you see? So now... At price P0, the quantity would not be Q0. The quantity, the new quantity is going to be Q1. So let's move from point A to point B here. Yeah. And let's see. Okay, if price of bread increases, 
then rational okay uh, consumers are going to do what they are going to shift okay from buying breads to buying pasta then obviously the demand will be increasing or we say the demand will shift to the right okay uh, let's look into a complementary for pasta okay so if you want to make pasta you need your tomato sauce yeah the one that comes in a bottle or a tin okay uh, i always use prego so let's say in this case here um the tomato sauce okay that you want to buy okay we also assume that the sauce is much more cheaper now okay so when the tomato sauce is cheaper okay obviously now you'd be more interested to eat more pasta because if you want to buy the sauce it's cheaper right okay so if the price goes down if you are buying more tomato sauce obviously you would want to buy more pasta okay so in this case here what happens is that Okay, as you are buying more tomato sauce, okay, because the price is cheaper, the demand for pasta will increase from D0 to D2 here. So, can you see now automatically the demand is going to increase? Yeah, okay, at price P0, now the quantity here will be Q2, which is at point C here. So, we would say that the demand curve have shifted to the right okay or the demand have increased yeah and uh, this will be the effect of complementary and vice versa let's say if the tomato sauce becomes more expensive then obviously okay you would be buying less tomato sauce and you'd be buying less pasta yeah then the demand will shift to the left from d0 to d1 yeah so this is the case for price of other products okay other to pasta next we move on to taste and preference yeah now our taste and preference can be influenced by many factors can be our personal preference it can be culture it can be peer pressure so many factors yeah so let's say okay uh, we expect christmas is coming or probably any other festive season okay probably you'll be having more guests coming in Okay, and you would want to make more pasta. Yeah, so definitely your demand for pasta would increase. Or let's say, okay, you read an article in a health magazine saying that consuming pasta would, okay, definitely I'm talking about the healthy pasta, which is without of the cheese and all. Okay, consuming pasta uh, as compared to probably rice, okay, it gives you more health benefits. Therefore, you would be preferring to buy pasta. Yeah, so the demand for pasta will increase from D0 to D1 here. Yeah, so you can automatically see now, okay, if due to these two reasons, festive reasons or probably health benefits, there are many more other uh, factors yeah, that can influence your preferences. At price P0 now, okay, the quantity of pasta yeah, that you would be... So we move on, we look into the uh, following determinant which is income. So in the case of income here, yeah, uh, as we have discussed earlier, if your income increases, yeah, if your income increases, your demand yeah, for normal goods will increase. So assuming pasta is normal good and your income increases, yeah, your income increases, then the demand for pasta is going to increase. Therefore, the demand for pasta will shift to the right yeah, from D0 to D1 here. So as we have looked into normal goods, let's look into inferior goods. Yeah. So in this case here, let's say we classify instant noodles as inferior goods. Yeah. And in this case here now, okay, your income decreases. Okay. As your income decreases, what happens is that obviously in the case of pasta, you'll be buying less pasta. Yeah. Your demand will shift to the left. But how about the case of instant noodles? Uh, so you have your price. Okay, for instant noodles and you have quantity of instant noodles. Okay, initially this was the demand D0. As income decreases, your demand for instant noodle will increase from D0 to D1. Yeah, because in this case here now, you have less money. Yeah, so therefore, you would prefer to purchase instant noodles. Yeah, so the price P0, this will be Q1 and Q2. So you see, what happens is that as your income is changing, yeah, if your income increases, then you buy more normal goods, which is pasta, demand increases, 
And in the case of instant noodle, if your income increases, the demand will decrease, okay? Where the demand will shift to the left. But let's say if your income decreases, then what happens? Yeah, in that case, you will buy less pasta and you will buy more instant noodles. Another determinant, consumer expectation. So let's say if you expect in the future, price is going to increase yeah, for pasta. Now what happens is that if pasta is part of your staple, so what you would do is that if you expect in the future price is going to increase, you will stock up now. You will demand for more pasta and the demand will increase. Yeah, Shift to the right from D0 to D1. Okay. Now, let's say okay, if you are expecting the price in the future to decrease, then probably what you will do is that you would want to buy more pasta in the future because it's, it will be much more cheaper. Yeah, therefore, what you will do, you will tend to postpone your spending a little. Yeah, so what will happen now if your expectation that the price is going to decrease, then the demand now for pasta will decrease. Okay, or we say shift to the left yeah? from D0 to D2 here. Yeah, so this is how okay, your expectation okay, will influence the demand. And the last determinant here is rather straightforward, which is number of buyers. So if there is greater number of buyers who would want to buy pasta, right, automatically the demand would be greater from D0 to D1. Yeah. And if there are less people, okay, if the number of buyers are decreasing, then the demand is going to decrease from D0 to D2. Yeah. So if it's increasing, it shifts to the right. If it's decreasing, it shifts to the left. So lastly is change in quantity demanded versus change in demand. So let's see yeah, how they are different. Now, change in quantity demanded happens when there is going to be change in the price of the product. Yeah, For example, if let's say initially the price was at P0 and quantity was at Q0 and let's say if the price changes yeah, to P0 one and quantity goes to q1 so can you see it's moving from point a to point b so if there's going to be change yeah, in the price of the product we say it causes a movement along the demand curve it either moves from a to b if price decreases from p0 to p1 or it moves from b to a if price increases from p1 to p0 now, what is happening here? Okay, there is change in quantity demanded. The change in quantity demanded is either from Q0 to Q1 or Q1 to Q0. Can you see? There is no changes in the demand curve. The demand curve is the same. It's either moving up or moving down. Yeah. So, we call this change in quantity demanded, which is caused by change in price of the product. Now, let's say if there's going to be change in other determinants else than the price, which we have discussed earlier, such as price of related products, taste and preference, income, consumer expectation, number of buyers. If those determinants are going to change, it will not cause movement. Okay, So, let's say if the price was here, P0, and quantity was here, Q0. So let's say if those determinants are changing, yeah, okay, for example, let's say we say that uh, consumer's taste and preference for this particular product increases. What will happen here is that the demand will shift from D0 to D1. Let's say we are looking into our same example such as pasta just now. So if consumer prefer pasta, demand will shift. If consumer income increases, they will buy more pasta. So you see? Or vice versa. If they prefer bread, then the demand for pasta is going to decrease. It will shift to the left from D0 to D2. So, you see, it's either the demand curve is shifting to the right or to the left. Now, the shift to the right or to the left will be caused by change in other determinants which are else than the price of the product. Yeah. So, if this happens, we say there is change in demand. Can you see the demand changes from D0 to D1 or D0 to 
D2. So you need to understand the differences. This is change in quantity demanded caused by change in price. This is change in demand which will be caused by changes in determinants else than price.